A 16 year old Aaron Knighter ran a 100 meter in 10.29 and a 200 meter in 20.33. This was a star in the making. Since then, this track athlete only improved consistently, running times like 19.49 in the 200 meter and 10.04 in the 100 meter. I'm going to explain to you how he is so fast by breaking down his technique in his races, his structural differences that makes him stand out, and going over his training plan. The biggest thing that stands out about Aaron Knighton is the Achilles tendon length. This is important because the better the Achilles tendon is, the better it can utilize elastic energy sprinting is the most elastic movement you can do training the achilles tendon is very crucial easy ways to turn your achilles tendon into elastic machine is by doing exercises like pogos bounds and flying tents these all put the body in a max velocity setting that forces the achilles tendon to pop off the ground very fast this is key for coming elastic, especially if you don't have a long Achilles insertion. The next important aspect is overall lengthy body structures. Athletes who are built to be taller, leaner, and more elastic like Arian Knighton are called pullers and they excel in aspects like deadlifts, max velocity sprinting, and one foot jumps. All these aspects make perfect sense with the way he runs and his strong points which are max velocity sprints and speed endurance which is the second half of the race most of the time. With his weak points being the block start and power in early acceleration. I go into more detail on a puller versus pusher type of athlete in this video right here so it's crucial that we know his athletic type because now we can go over his training plan and give you some suggestions on how to get fast just like him some aspects shows that he was meant to be a good 400 meter runner he trained year round and he used to say if i was running and wasn't hurt i would keep running this shows that he has a great lactic threshold which is key for speed endurance i'm going to teach you how to train that later in this video he said he did the weight room but it would hurt him sometimes so he mainly ran so I'm gonna give you what his training plan probably was. I've trained hundreds of athletes, so this is probably the setup he had. On Monday, he probably did acceleration and max velocity combo, which is a lot of sprints to 40 to 60 meter, high quality sprint type of day with a lot of horizontal plyometrics. I'd say he probably didn't do too much weight room work on these days. Tuesdays and Thursdays was 50% tempo day, something as simple as 10 times 100 meter at 50% tempo with short rest more for a cardio base. Wednesday was probably a pure max velocity day, flying 20s and 40 yard sprints with high rest and short ground contact time vertical plyometrics like pogos and bounce then friday he for sure did a lot of speed endurance work probably something as simple as 300 meter max effort sprints with six to eight minute rest until he literally couldn't do another one he probably saw a lot of gains from this type of work because his lactic threshold was so strong he could do multiple sets of these type of sprints most people will do these sprints and be done after the second or third 300 meter because their lactic threshold is so weak First thing we're gonna take a look at is his block start. So in the setup, this is really important for a lot of sprinters, even if you're in the NFL, track doesn't matter. You want this knee right here to be under your hip. He has it a little bit in front that can give you a little more power on your back leg, but you want this Achilles tendon to be loaded. So you see how once he kind of gets set up, once he raises, this Achilles tendon is activated. And since his knee is under his hip, his back foot will be able to produce a lot of force, which is where you're going to get most of your force from. A lot of people push off this front foot. Its main reasons is because they don't have a power position from this back foot and their Achilles tendon is not loaded. Another thing that's really important too, when you see in his start right here, his head is relaxed and it's nice and down. He's looking probably at like his pelvis area. That's where you want to look. A lot of people ask me, where do you look? Some people look at the ground. I say you always want to look back down because where you're going to be pushing is backwards. So you should look that direction until you reach your max velocity phase. Now, this is the most important part of the start is this set position. His whole entire shoulders are slightly in front of the hands. His hips stay go straight up. So they go exactly up. They don't go forward. He doesn't roll forward a lot. His Achilles tendon is loaded. He has his toes touching the ground and a little bit clipped into the ground. So you're not only going horizontal, you got a little bit of vertical um, traction right there. And then on top of that, you always want to see positions like this where the knee is in line with this knee or the knee could be a little farther back where you would see like a, a separation, kind of like, like this separation right here. You'll see separation between these two right here. Um, his core looks tight right here and he keeps his head relaxed. So like I said, he's looking back. He's looking back because he's going to push back that entire time. This is the block start portion. We're going to go into acceleration next. This is the best angle I'm going to get for the acceleration. So we're going to look at lane six, I believe, right here. It's going to be Arian Knighton. As you see, no allows right here. But in his stance, he gets up pretty early. All right, so his body's pretty vertical, very early into acceleration. There's really nothing wrong with that. A lot of people think you need to be 
at such a horizontal 45 degree angle the entire time during acceleration that is optimal but most athletes even the most top athletes in the world are going to be maybe three steps at a 45 degree angle and then they'll pop up just like this right away so it doesn't mean he's weak or he needs to work on it his superpower obviously is the speed endurance end of the race and the max velocity so we only have a couple frames of this but you can see his uh he pushes off that back foot this front foot comes out first right and then he toe drags which i'm not a big fan of but if you think that works for you that's fine but the biggest thing we're seeing here is his heel turning in a lot of people don't know about this but your heel turning in is an indicator that you are activating your glutes pretty well. If your heels don't turn in, you're probably lacking some type of um, external or internal hip rotation. And that can really, really hold you back in terms of your acceleration ability and also max velocity. So he pushes very, very hard. His heels turn in the entire time. He keeps his head at a pretty neutral place. He doesn't just look up right away or look super hard down forcing his neck in any type of weird position you see the hip internal rotation right here a lot of people don't want your knees in they say when you squat put your knees out all this type of stuff you want some internal rotation because that's where you produce force you produce force on the way so when your knees cave in that's where you see a lot of the top jumpers when they jump their knees come in at contraction part of the face you want that and when you get that and you get a lot of good heel turn you you're you're pretty set up for some good glute contraction and some good force production which obviously he's would produce a lot of force to run this fast in terms of stride length his strides stay right under his body you want to attack down and back and you want to land right under your hip that will give you a positive angle and force forward to run fast a lot of people try to bring their knees up you actually need to think about bringing your knees down attacking down as fast as possible and your knees will come up and uh, gain height like a bystander or a by factor of that so he comes here he's about four foot he lands four foot pretty well and then he's into max velocity now we're going to talk about max velocity here you can see he keeps his his torso right here above his hips that's really important he has a little bit of forward lean there's nothing wrong with the forward lean too many people hear tall posture and they start to lean back someone who's leaning back right now is this lane right here where my mouse is at he's kind of in that position even him right here where they start to lean back when they try to stay too tall he keeps a really strong core so it's kind of like his core is flexed and he stays above his center of mass which is his hips and then just simply he lands in a bent knee position another thing that you hear all the time is you need to land completely straight with the foot right under your hips like you do in the in your form drills but once you're racing against the fastest people in the world that's never going to happen all right it might happen but you're not going to get it every single time and it's really about just not heel striking staying as close to your center of mass and producing a shit ton of vertical force under your center of mass like we talked about earlier his internal rotation at the hips are really well and he's producing a lot of force a big myth that a lot of people do wrong is the thing about swinging their arms forward he's swinging his arms back and you see how his front arm barely even comes forward right here this is about as far as it comes and he bends but the biggest part is driving it back because when you drive your arms back you activate the opposite glute so this arm is back and now the foot that's down his glute is firing when you drive that arm back it's basic biomechanics he keeps that going he keeps his form strong and this is how you run good max velocity it's just as simple and the most important part is he's relaxed the next thing we're going to go into is speed endurance the speed endurance part is really about your form as long as you keep your technique around this curve doesn't really matter everyone likes to talk about the bend who cares you just need to keep your form as much as possible everyone else will start breaking down around this part but as long as you stay landing under your center of mass you train your speed endurance during practice you're going to be just fine you want a good core you don't want to limit rotation too many people try to get stiff towards the end of the speed endurance you want to just keep rotating breathe keep your neck at a neutral posture keep your body at a neutral posture and let that shit ride you will fly if you relax more during the speed endurance instead of trying to force something because you know that you cannot run faster after 50 meters it's all about who slows down the most this is his technique breakdown if you want to learn more about getting faster or jumping higher check out one of these two videos have a good day